Hello, Bolladan. Good morning from Wales. Welcome to our little uh, buddy build of the Albatross D3. Uh, I'm with his Steph today, the budget modeler as always. So how are you doing, Steph? I'm fine, thank you very much. Hello, coming from England. Congratulations <laughs> on your win last night. <laughs> I don't, I don't nice, <laughs> nice game against Poland. That's going to be interesting. I might just sit and watch that on Tuesday instead of the England game. <laughs> Everyone's supposed to Welsh over the English. <laughs> no. <laughs> Except in the English. Not a hope. <laughs> I, I'm a bit miffed about what they've done. Oh, yeah. They've changed the England badge on the back of the collar. Uh, oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That, the George flag. That's that's not fair. No. That's, that's our wrong, country's though. flag. You, you don't mess with the flag of your country. No. It's like somebody coming along and changing the flag of Wales or Scotland or Ireland. Yeah. There'd be absolute uproar. Yeah. You lot would go mental if somebody said that. Yeah, nobody touches our dragon. Our dragon's awesome. It is. I'd love a flag, but, but then again, it'd be hijacked. Like everything <laughs> else that English has been hijacked. Yeah, it'd end up being a unicorn or something. <laughs> okay, anyway, we'll not go there. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just had a bit of a chunter this morning. <laughs> How are you, no, Mikey? I'm all right, mate. Just a bit tired because uh, I've been taking things apart <laughs> and uh, getting all mechanical and end up with this. Hey, you're a mech. <laughs> Deal with it. Yeah, well, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> so, yeah. So, what have you been up to this week? Uh, this week, uh, fanning around, doing bits and pieces, uh, doing the Agora Zero, which is that? coming along nicely. Yep. There's a couple of bits I would change. Hmm. Just because the right fiddly bloody things to do, and they're a nightmare to get right. Um, but apart from that, yeah, loving it. Uh, the prop looks gorgeous when it's spinning. Yeah. Have you, can you show it on camera? camera? Yes. Yeah. Did it at uh, the start of the last episode. Mm -hmm. um, and I've nearly finished the cockpit. Uh, I'll show you where I am on this thing. Yeah. So let me just flip cameras. I will put you on to the big screen. Cool. Thank you. There we go. So engine bay yeah. is done. Nice. The fuel tank and the ammo boxes are done. They just need weathering. Excellent. The chair needs its cushion. Yeah. And it needs its body in there. Oh, very good. <laughs> so that's a PJ Productions German pilot, World War One. Ah. So it's that one, but it's that one there that I'm doing. Yeah, with the goggles up, so it'll be landed, and it'll but it'll be in. So that's the one I'm doing. Yeah. So he'll be in there. Um, I have to fiddle about with everything. Uh, got to finish off the engine. Mm -hmm. So just got to do these, and then. Get that fitted and then do some touch ups on the pipe work where I've bent it all and knackered it and just needs redoing, really. So that will go on there, like so. So that'll be like that. Nice. Um, and I'm just going to be sort of gluing wheels together getting them ready for priming and painting and cleaning down the guns and just general sort of fanning around like that yeah so that's what i'm going to be doing today so if i can get them all ready and prepped uh i'll do a bit of priming um and then i'll spray the figure with a zenithal highlight mm -hmm. That'll give me all the highlights and the low lights and the mid-tones where they've got to go. Yeah. And just generally faff around with it today. I and believe you've got, 
I may even get to actually uh, where are we getting? drilling some holes in the wings. Ah, yeah. I'm getting those ready for putting uh, my little pins in. Because what I do is I drill all the way through. Yeah. So I'll go all the way through. And then that gives me a really good secure locating. And then cut it flush on the opposite side. And then just very gently knock it back. Because on this, it's got some really lovely texture on the wings. Yeah. So, yeah. That is what I was going to be doing today. Excellent. I believe you got something coming for the build. A special oh, delivery. I have. Um, if I can stretch it out this week and next week, mm. hopefully it'll be here, but we may have to postpone for a week or so. Yeah. Uh, because I'm waiting for the uh, upgrade pack from Quinter Studios for this. Nice. Oh, it's amazing. If you have a look in the description, I've put a link in there to it. Yeah. So it just means taking some bits off here and doing bits and pieces. It's yeah. like that bit there on the comes off. Yeah. And we just clean it all up and put a new one on there. Uh -huh. And yeah. I'm um, looking forward to it coming because it's got all the dials and everything for the cockpit, everything that goes on a cockpit wall. So I can't do anything to the cockpit until I've actually got that. Yeah. So it's just waiting for that to rock up and then I can play silly buggers with it. Woohoo! Yeah. So that's where I am. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. What do you, do you want to do comments first, or do you want to go through what you're up to? Yeah, we'll go through comments. So, first of all, we've got our friend Mr. Marley. Hey, up. Hey, up, John. <laughs> How's life in Oz? And then we've got Duke Wellington. Good day from Oz again. Hope you guys are all okay. Morning, Duke. Morning, Duke. And we've got Chat About Productions, which is uh, Martin Moise, which is our local M4H volunteer. Hey up, Martin. Ah, we're mental anyway. Morning both. Good morning, Martin, and good morning, Diane, because I'm assuming she's with you. Hey up, Martin. <laughs> Making models. Gents, just popped in to say hello, a quick hello, just off nights and off to bed. Oh, oh, hey up, hello, mate. Hey Thanks up, for Carl. That's Carl. Yeah. Thanks for popping in, dude. Yep. Uh, Jim Altercott, good morning from Chicago. Morning, Jim. Morning. Typical late March weather, snow flurries and cold. <laughs> Ooh, mate, yep. Hello from Tiff. Hello, Tiff. Hello, Tiff. Welcome back. Mr. Skelly, good morning, fellows. Are we all well? I am. Yep. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, Jim Albatross, pardon me, but I can't help but think of that every time I see or hear the word. <laughs> oh, you're not the only one. Albatross, get your fresh Albatross. Uh, Dominique Koku, morning, Stefan Mike. Morning, Dominique. Uh, and Martin says, no, she's with her mum. I've got a day off. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, dear. <laughs> the cat's I away. Believe... Yep. Yeah, the mouse I is going to play. Yeah. I believe he's going to the Cheshire Museum today to have a word with oh. them. Um, because we, our group might be doing like a, a weekly modelling display for them for H at the museum during the summer holidays. Oh, nice. Because they want to do an exhibition of scale modelling, so they want M4H to be involved. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Excellent. Well, yeah, so that's the comments for now. Hopefully there'll be more. <laughs> I'm sure there will be. I'm sure there will be. So then, Mikey, down to you. Down to me? Okay, so what have I been up to? Well, this week, I have been... 
Uh, it's in still in bits because I've not finished it, but I've been making. Oh shit! Beltic train. It's still in bits, so I'm making a YouTube video about building that, which will be on my channel in the next few days. I've also been making an Irvin Rommel, one sixteenth. So I've done the uh, black primer for that. I fancy doing a bit of larger scale figure painting than normal. Uh, last week, we did fuel tank and, ooh, there we go, the fuel tank and the ammo boxes. So if I focus, focus. I'm like a kid with ADHD today. There we go. That helped. Except when you put the wrong one on. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> there you go. Well, that's done. So and today I'm going to be working on getting the wings ready and putting the ailerons on and things like that. Looking really good, mate. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I think I've got the wrong set of wings out of the box. <laughs> that's the problem with biplanes. The top wing has got the uh, radiator on it. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, I need to make some eyelets as well, don't I? Mm hmm. Because I'm not going to be able to put the rigging on otherwise. Nope. So, yeah, today I am working on wings and i may also paint the inside of the cockpit because the next stage apparently is putting the cockpit and the engine and all that on the fuselage together so i might paint the cockpit just to slow me down a little bit so yeah that's me so just go as you want to go yeah build to your speed you build how you want because all what i can do is i can always had a couple of extra days during the week just uh -huh. to catch up. Well, you need to fill time anyway, don't you? Ask yeah. The so at the moment, I'm just doing the undercarriage. I've already glued the wheels together. Yeah. So I'm just using my rotary sanding tool. I love this tool. I need to get one of them. I've got a Dremel, but it's way too powerful. Yeah. Uh, this, <laughs> what I've done, uh, this is 12 volt. Yeah. So if I crank it up to 12 volts. That's still way too fast. Yeah. So what I've got is I bought myself a uh, variable. I, come on. Out you. Can I get it in you without ripping everything out? I bought myself one of those, a variable pack, so I can change the voltage. Yeah. And then I just... Just talk about wrecking the bloody joint. <laughs> and loud, your shed. Yeah, this has got... I found the right adapter, uh -huh. uh, cut it in to this, Yeah. Uh, plugged it in, screwed it in, and now it, it's bloody awesome because I can yeah. vary the speed of it, which is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, I'm uh, quite happy with how well these are going. Uh -huh. Oh, no, turn the bloody speed down, Steph. <laughs> if you get certain speed down, drill a bloody big hole through the plane. Yeah, it does. It Because it goes so fast, it melts the plastic. Yeah. But uh, when I bought it, uh, I bought... Let me show you what I got. 
lots of different grades. So between four and 2,500 grit. Yeah. So I've got these, but you've also got, as you can see, larger ones. So if I'm doing yes. a big area, you can use those. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's a, it's a really nice bit of kit. So Martin says, uh, no, the Alex, who is the curator of the museum, he's not there today, so he'll be there next week. Cool. All right. Duke says, it's not too bad here. It's 10, 15 p.m. and I'm modeling wearing just shorts. <laughs> nice. We've actually got a rare sunny day in Wales. <laughs> are you where about, sorry, sorry, where about, whereabouts are you, Duke? Remind us. Australia is a rather big place. Yeah. yeah. What seems to happen here at the minute is it's really nice and sunny in the morning, and when it gets to the afternoon, it goes really horrible and grey and dull. Yeah. Uh, mine says a potentiometer. There we go. Yep. Yeah, basically. Jim says, question. Is the level and quality of detail in your rodent kits at or near other World War One kit makers? Good question. Um, I would say the detail is um, below wingnut wings, but mm -hmm. above average. I'd agree with that. Um, they could there's there's certain things they could improve, obviously. Uh, like giving us locating pins. Yeah. Oh, that's another thing I've got to do to the uh, fuselage. Put my own because what I do, I what I do with road and stuff mm. is I get a thin piece of plastic card. Yeah. Like that, and then get these and just put it in there just so it overlaps them so about a five mil over overlap on either side so i cut them off to about 10 mil yeah and then a five mil in there because of the curve of the aircraft if you do it a different angle you see that that's about you see, look at the angle that's creating yeah so you're looking at getting it square Mm -hmm. So you're probably going to have, you may even have to come down to about three mil on there, but on the bottom you can have a bigger one yeah. because it doesn't. It, it's the flat is bigger. So I usually do one, two, three across the bottom, uh -huh. one there, and then I'll do one there. When yeah. you do, if you do this one, just make sure you don't interfere with the frame that goes in there because of the yeah. frame that goes in there just make sure you don't interfere with it and i may I'll, I'll have to have a look but i may just put one somewhere along there just to give it that bit of extra connection yeah yeah that's that's my big bugbear with rodan mm. and also Putting extra pieces in the cockpit that aren't there. <laughs> That's brilliant. Well done. But yeah, it's not, they're not bad kits. They are not bad kits at all. Um, there are a lot, lot worse kits out there, but there's also better kits. I would probably, the ones I've made, I would put them wing up wings. For, this is just a First World War aircraft. This is my opinion. Um, I would start at the top wing nut wings without yeah. a doubt the best world war one aircraft manufacturers that were out there yeah. um i've got i've got two um that i've got to build uh they're both software pops yeah. one rfc one's uh rnas which is the royal naval air service yeah so those two have got to be built um 
then I would probably put uh, Copper State Models next. Mm, especially uh, for the vehicles. Yeah, they they come in a very close second to Wingnut Wings. Mm. Um, and then probably I would put Rodent in third. Yeah. They are not, there's quite a bit of flash on them. Uh, these are what they call short run kits. Mm -hmm. So the molds are not that brilliant, but the detail on them is lovely. Absolutely yeah. lovely. So, yeah, that's uh, that's what I I think. But that, it, again, um, it's like our souls. Everybody's got an opinion. <laughs> Everybody's got one. Opinions are like our souls. Everybody's got one. So it, it's a match. You could get a Friday afternoon kit from Rodan that is absolutely dire. Yeah. But then you could get one from Wingnut Wings and CSM. Yeah. Yeah, it's gone hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, plastics warped, all sorts can happen to them. Yeah. So, yeah, it's about your experience with that kit. But I've got about three or four Rodan ones. I've got an SE5A that I want to build. Ooh, I've got an SE5A. What, in oh, 130 yeah. seconds? Um, I couldn't tell you, to be honest, without going around a look. I think it's the Revel one. All right, yeah. I'm looking forward to making that. Uh, I never look forward to making Revel. <laughs> I, I, I've got a love-hate relation to it with them. Mm. I just love to hate them. Yeah. <laughs> and See. that stems from the uh, tornado. Yeah. The, the moulds on that have got that worn. Yeah. The new kit I, I bought and I bought a kit. Uh the 130 second go for one. And yeah. all the detailing on the underside of the front section has gone. Oh. There's absolutely no detail on it whatsoever. And I'm like, that was so, hence the reason why I'm saving my pennies up for the Italeri 132nd Tonka. Yeah, can't blame it, to us. Yeah. Right. Oh, the Italeri one looks gorgeous. What about you, Michael? What's your experiences? Um, well, this is the first rodent kit I've built. But I wouldn't mind making more. I've never built cop. I would love to build a cop state model World War One vehicle. Uh, sort of like my sort of dream kits that if I ever have enough money. Um, my favourite model manufacturers though are ICM and World War One stuff. Yeah, I've never built ICM. World, I've built ICM, but I've never done World War One stuff. Mikey's frozen. <gasps> oh no. Right, while he's frozen, I'll quickly go through some comments. Uh, Tiffany says it's sunny here in the northeast, too. Good. Uh, Mr. Marley, a lovely 18 degrees C in Newcastle, Australia, right now. Uh, Tiffany says, nine, I'm Durham, John. Uh, it's nine, sorry, it's nine in Durham, John. And Duke says, central Victoria. Cool. So, you're back. Mikey, yay, yay! yay. <laughs> so, carry on. You, you, you've made ICM. You want to make CSM? Yes. Do you want to make uh, a a uh, wing not wings? I, I would love to, but I'll never be able. Probably never be able to justify paying that much for one. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. It's like yes. if you look on the auction sites, they start at ninety pound. Oh yeah, <laughs> the starting bids. I just can't justify that. Um, but I absolutely love ICM because I love building their vehicles. It's everything fits together perfect. Uh, there's almost no flash and stuff, and the plastic's decent and everything. Yeah. And a really nice crisp detail in them. 
I can't remember whether it's ICM or Mini Art that really, I think it's Mini Art, and it really, really pisses me off. Mm. Uh, they don't have numbers on the sprues. Yeah. And I'm like, what the, what the hell is that about? <laughs> Why? Why do you not have numbers on your sprues? What yeah. are you playing about at? I was watching you've, some. Sorry, go on. You've got to keep flicking backwards and forwards in the manual to find out which part goes where and this and that. And it's just like <laughs> infuriating. <laughs> sorry, what were you going to say, Mikey? I was going to say, I was watching, I can't remember who it was, but I was watching someone doing a build the other week and they had the same problem. None of the sprues had numbers on. So what they had to do was get some masking tape and write the letter for each frame on it. So they could find it easily. Yeah. What you'll find with uh, ICM, uh, sorry, with things like that, in the front of the destructions, mm. you've got a list of what's on the sprues. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep flicking backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards. It's just totally infuriating. Yeah. Duke says he's in central Welling, uh, Victoria. Cool. He also says, what about Edward? Good uh, I've never built an Edward World War One aircraft. I lied. I am. I'm building the F-2B. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's okay. Um, I still don't think it's as good as Roden. Mm -hmm. Certainly nowhere near CSM and uh, Wing Not Wings. I would probably put those in at fourth. Yeah. Um, but this is on my my own personal building experience. Yeah. I have got an Edward. Somewhere. So I think what I've done with it. I can, I can see my kit. My stash from where I'm sitting. So I'm just trying to figure out why I can't see the Edward one. Look, I'll have a look. Hmm. I'll spot it now as it gets off the side. Yeah, it's somewhere. Did oh, you find it? Yeah, it's the Fokker D7. Oh, very nice. It was um, my secret Santa. All right. What oh, scale? That one. 148. Oh, nice. I'm liking yeah. the red. But then, yeah, I do like a red aeroplane. Yeah. Oh, my Alvin red is painted it. Ow. Only because I'm red, green, colour blind. <laughs> so, red makes my eyes go a little bit funny. Nightmare. Yeah. Dominique says, I'm going again. S6 with construction. And see you next time. Cool. Take care, Dominique. So I do. Uh, Mr. Marley says, I recently built Edward's 172 Albatross D5. Really nice, but just too small for photo etch at that scale. And Edward's yeah. Spitfires are wonderful. Yeah, the Spitfire. Do you know what? I haven't built a Spitfire in oh, over 10 years, 12 years. It's a long time. Might have to get one at some point. Because everyone's got to have a Spitfire in their collection, haven't they? Yeah, I used the, uh, I built the 124th ages ago. 
Mm. And I used that because I dropped it. And I used that so, as, my, as my mule. Yeah. Do you have a mule? I don't. You need to get one. But somebody else in the Discord group, uh, they tried to put their 124 Spitfire up on the ceiling, and when they turned round, it fell off and smashed. Ow. Yeah. And it's their pride and joy. Was that the new 124? Yep. Ah. <gasps> like a... He was, he's still gutted now a week on. I bet he is. Mm. Anybody I know? Yes. Okay. Uh, infantry. No, 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 no. No, don't mention them. Not no. fair. Uh, Tiss says, I'm listening in, guys, just doing a bit of rearranging. Want to put my PC in the dining room instead of the art studio. Eh, makes sense. Got a table and chairs, sir. Yep. It's time for an intervention, Mikey. Is that because I haven't got a Spitfire yet? <laughs> I used to have. <laughs> I used to have half a bloody Air Force. My issue is uh, it's there's too many out there, mm. and I'm like, nah, too many Spitfires out there. It's been done to death, mm. and I have always preferred anything weird and wacky or a bit of uh, kit bashing, scratch building, stuff like that. Yeah, something that's going to stretch me. It's like I was saying the other day to someone that I love Airfix, but they've they've become a sort of a one trick pony. You can pretty much predict what they're going to release each year. Okay, what they're going to release this year? What's their next release this year? I don't know what the next release is, but they're going to release a Spitfire at some point. No, they're not. <laughs> they, they, the reason for that is because their Spitfires are so good. Yeah, that is why they get talked about so much. Yeah. Um, and to say they're a one-trick pope, no, I don't agree with you on that one. Yeah? Look at the Gannet. Yeah? But yeah, so I'm not saying specifically one aircraft, though. I'm saying they're sort of becoming predominantly aircraft rather than all different types of models. Whilst they're still doing different types of models, like the Shannon-class lifeboat, which is coming out, they're, they're still predominantly doing aircraft but that's what they're known for yeah they are known for their aircraft it's yeah. just like tamia are known for their vehicles <laughs> yeah being shaken by it. yeah uh it's like saying copper state models are a one-trick pony because they they do the majority of world war one stuff yeah but it's what they're known for yeah and um, they had an interview with Mr. Tamia a couple of years ago. Mm. And they were saying, so who do you think is your biggest competitor? And the way the interview was talking to him, he was yeah. expecting him to say somebody like Meng or somebody like that. Uh, it was after Wing Up Wings went down the drain. Yeah. And he looked at him and he said, Airfix, yeah, and they're like, "What do you mean?" It, and he said, "Well, Airfix have seriously upped their game." Yeah, we now need to do the same. Yeah, and the reason that Airfix have upped their game so much is because the designers of the model kits are all model makers. Yeah, they employ model makers to design their kits. Yeah, and. Because of that, they have now become very, so much more user friendly. Yeah. Or maker friendly. Yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, it's always good. Oh, definitely. Right. Uh, Do you want to go through some comments? Yeah. 
Wing Nut Wings are being sold here in different marketplaces online for over 400 Aussie dollars, about 200 pounds. Yep. Stupid money. Holy. Yeah, one of the, I was at uh, one show and yeah. one of the guys selling kits offered me a Wing Nut Wings kit yeah. for 130 quid that had been started. <laughs> and I'm like, no. I said, I'll give you 50 quid for it. It started. Oh, yeah. no, I can't do that much. Then, no. no I'm it's not... like... Sorry, go on. No, go. I was going to say, it's like accurate armor, isn't it? It's... Oh, yeah. don't. I... I'm not a fan of accurate armor. It's um, more like inaccurate armor. Yeah. I mean, I like building their kits, but like the one kit I want is the Foden recovery truck. But it's over two hundred pound. Yeah, I I can't remember who it is, but somebody does the resin one thirty second scale, or is it one thirty fifth, one or two? Uh, Bloodhound missile mm -hmm. on its stand, nearly two hundred quid. Yeah, I can't afford that. I'd love that. No. But anyway, let's crack that's on. For, that's for people with more money than sense. Yeah, people. <laughs> People will pay it, mate. People will pay it. That's a problem. Mr. Skelly says, even when I was building planes as a kid, I never built a Spitfire. Oh, that's <laughs> sacrilegious. <laughs> How can you say that to a plane builder? <laughs> I've only ever built one Spitfire. Yeah. Mm. The, the first model I ever built was with my dad when I was about seven years old, just after him and my mum got divorced. And he bought a model kit for me and him to do a sort of like a bonding activity over the weekend at my mm. and granddad's. And he bought the B-17G. Yeah. And I was in a modelling shop the other day and I found one for 20 quid. Did you and get I it? it? I did. A 172 one. Nice. So, yeah. So that's a little bit of a like, proper emotion piece for me mm. i'm gonna take my time over uh john marley said yep uh, <laughs> yeah the intervention is about me not having a spitfire i was wondering what the hell he was on about that <laughs> uh jim says the next spitfire i'll build is the aussie version of the edward mark 5c nice Hmm. Skelly says, whilst I agree with your view on ethics, Mikey, they do need to make money and they do have a large fan base. Very, very true. Yep. They found what works for them, so they might as well stick with it. Mm. I wouldn't mind a crack at the 148 swordfish that's just come yep. out. I've just Happy. built the 172nd. Hmm. I think it's the one that an FX one that I would like to build. Mm, maybe the ferret, maybe. I think I'd like to have a go at the Shannon as well. Mm. Wouldn't mind having a go at that. FX of oh Jim says FX of Proven to provide quality, accurate kits that build well. There we go. Yep. And John Marley says, don't make me come over there. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be more than welcome, John. <laughs> I'll have a pint waiting for you, mate. Uh, Jim says, I have two Spitfires in my completed display, an Aussie Mark 8 and a Mark 1. Nice. Nice. Yeah. John says, oh, the Airfix 148 Bristol Bulldog will be on the bench this year. Excellent. That'll be on your new bench, will it, John? Yep. Jim says, I'm hoping to see a 48th scale Lysander from Airfix. Ah. Well, the next one is a bottom pull defiant in 148, apparently. Yeah. I'm not sure what that ethics to make. 
I, most of the stuff I do is vehicles, other than yeah. World War One. Uh, uh, shall we go? No, no. I'm just thinking to myself. Sorry, you go ahead. Uh, I was in one of my local modish model shops. I'm lucky. I've got three within about 15 miles of us. Mm -hmm. I've got one just down the road in here. Uh, one down the road in Wellingborough and one in Northampton. Uh, the one in Wellingborough stocks Hobby 2000. Uh -huh. And I've got a 172nd scale Washington. Hey. <laughs> you know you know what that is, don't you? Go on. It's a B29 in disguise. Uh -huh. uh, the Americans sold a couple of squadrons worth of 29s to us. Yeah. And I think they were only in service for a couple of years. But I've got to build one because it was one of the ones that 15 squadron flew. Yes. Yeah. And I, what I eventually want to do is have every single aircraft that they did, they flew. Yeah. So, uh, I think I'd like to see. I mean, Airfix don't do much in the way of World War One tanks anymore. But mm. I'd love to see him make the Mark Eight. International from the First World War, right? Um, there's no, I, I think there's only one company that's made it, but it's actually a really interesting tank to look at. It had like, um, you know, how you got the coupler on top of the Mark IV and the two on the Mark V? Uh, no, I don't because I'm not up to speed on World War One tanks. Okay, so on the front, if you look at the front of a World War One tank, you got the big box on top at the front. On... Right, are we talking about the male and female? Both, yeah. Right, got you. So the, the first tanks? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So they had the big box on front, didn't they, with the slits yeah. in to look out of. Mm -hmm. Well, on the Mark 8, they have a big one in the middle, and then it's got another little one on top of that. Right. So it's like a, a little... Um, so the idea was they could reach through and unhitch the ditching beam, unditching beams and... Stuff yeah. like that, and they have firing slots in it and things. And it had more weapons on it and stuff. Yeah. Here you go. Here's one for you then. Hmm. Convert one. Yeah. All you need is some sprue, yeah. some styrene sheet. Yeah. Can have a go at it. Yeah. The stuff you've built for dios, you would be able to do that easily. Yeah. With uh, your talent there, mate, it, it's, it wouldn't be very hard for you because the stuff you build in dios, yeah. yeah, you can transfer that across to make to doing conversion kits yeah. and making conversions. Yeah. Not a bad idea, could be fun. <laughs> That's how we're looking to that. Uh, more comments, lots more comments. Mr. Marley says, I'm on my way for the beer. Hell yeah. I'll even have a whiskey with you if you want. Nice single malt. There's got to be Welsh whiskey, though, and dead in. Uh, Mark says, I do like some of the vintage air fix stuff. Yeah, I do as well, actually. What was I making? Oh, I made the uh, vintage Mark One tank, World War One Mark One tank. You know, the little trolley on the back. Oh, yeah. I made that the other week, and... Nice. I made a little, um, like a dio base, so it looks like it's coming over and off the trench. Oh, yeah. And I did the Zemmer 4 on it. I was, I was looking at it, I was like, you know what? I don't know whether I want to paint it, because I really like the way it looks. <laughs> because it looks like an old black and white photo, and it looks quite moody. Yeah, I might leave it like that. Oh, Send you a picture of my World War One trench I did. Mm. Um, what I did, I sprayed it all black. Yeah. And then I uh, gave it the old Zenithal highlight. But yeah. when I did it, I did it first of all in grey, uh -huh. and then in white. Yeah. And I'm looking at that, it going, that's like a black and white photo. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. And then me and the missus watched um, Peter Jackson's They Shall Not Grow Old. Yeah, it's brilliant, though, isn't it? Where he colorized it all. Yeah. Uh, so what I did, I left half black and white, mm -hmm. and I 
And they did the half. I painted the other half. Yeah. Nice. So it's half oh, black and white that. fading into half colour. Have you put pictures up on your Facebook page for it? Of it? Um, I did have ages ago, but I'll, I'll take a picture in a bit and send it to you so you can see what it's yeah. like. Awesome. Uh, Skelly says, I liken dissing Airfix to saying Love Actually is a naff chick flick. Both receive <laughs> the same pearl clutching at reaction. <laughs> it's true. And that's why I do it. <laughs> it's entertaining. Uh, Gary T says, hello, guys. Hi, Gary. You all right, Gary? I hope you're well. Thanks for uh, following my page as well, Gary, and all the likes and comments you've been putting on. Really appreciate it, dude. And I'll get in touch with you. If you could drop me a line on there, uh, we'll sort out when we're going to do these this live buddy build for the Whip It. Well, I'll do it live. You do it along with me. Uh, Jim says, glad to see more British support vehicles, trucks, cars from both World War One and World War Two offered by kit makers. Oh God, yes! Especially World War One. There is, I, I see them knocking out some crackers on that front lately. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I did the a few months ago. I did the FW FWD uh, truck. Um, and it was so nice to put together. It's um, F FWD stands for four wheel drive because the company that made them chose their name because they were the, one of the first companies in America to install four wheel drive on a truck. All right. Um, but they made they can they basically shipped a load of the FWD Type Bs over to Europe, and yeah. then the BF just. Turn them into whatever they needed, <laughs> which is why we've got so many variants of it. Yeah, and ICM are just doing brilliant with it. My personal opinion, <laughs> and I stick to it. The one I'm really hoping to get this year is the uh, World of One ammo US ammo truck. All right, so that should be a good, good one. Yeah. I was watching the review from Gary stuff the other day about it. It looks a really nice kit. There's also um, a really good book on the topic that you might like, Jim. It's called On the Road to Victory. It's all about World War One logistics um, and all the, how the vehicles in the British Expeditionary Forces and things were organised and how it impacted... The vehicles that are manufactured today go all over the world. All right. That sounds interesting. Yeah, yes. It was um, before the First World War, because the government realised that there's going to be a war at some point in the fu near future. Yeah. They uh, they want, they also wanted to get the sort of horse and cart buses off the streets of London. Mm -hmm. So what they did is they said to uh, companies, if you buy a motor, vehicle, motor bus then we will subsidise it for you on the condition that if war breaks out, you hand it over to us yeah. for the duration of the war. And then they said to the uh, vehicle manufacturers, because we're making this deal, we need it so that no matter how tired a soldier is, they can jump in any of the vehicles and drive it without having to worry about the pedals. So we want all the pedals to be in a standardised order. So that's why the uh, pedals in the car are the way they are now. Yeah. It's a really interesting book. Definitely one I recommend. Cool. Uh, John Marley says, Edward's Lysander was reboxed Gavia plastic. The plastic was the letdown of a really nice kit. Airfix would move, would move Lysander's. If they choose to produce one, yeah. The thing is, though, they've got there's there's a uh, a Lysander at uh, Shuttleworth. Mm. 
that they can use for measurements and stuff like that. So it's not like there's nothing out there for them to use to for referencing. Yeah. Jim says, good morning, Gary. Uh, Gary says, hi, Jim. Hope you're well. Jim, living the dream. John Marley, Gary! <laughs> uh, Marty says, whip it, you kinky bugger. <laughs> whip it real good. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Gary says, well, I've just ruined one tank. I don't think I'll be up for ruining the rip whip it net just yet. <laughs> uh, if, build, if you build it along, you'll think more about what you're doing, and you can always message me on the chat. And we can discuss it as we're going along. Then, uh, Jim says thanks for the book reference, Mike. We'll look it up. No problems. I've got plenty of World War One books. <laughs> I love World War One history. I was looking at, um, I got a series of books by, it's called Images of War. And they're basically a book, maybe 200, 100 to 200 pages. And it's just all photographs of a given topic. And I think I was looking at them on the shelf the other day and I've got about eight or nine of them now. And it's all different World War One topics. And then one book on the Challenger and one book on the Chieftain. <laughs> I was like, mm, I think I've got a little bit of an obsession with World War One. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, John Marley says, as Dave from the Plastic Model Mojo podcast says, so many kits, so little time. Oh, yes. Uh, Jim says, John Marley, good morning, sir. And John Marley says, replica lice under it, Tangmere was as well. I couldn't fault it. Yep. It's says, a replica. It's a replica. It's not the real thing. Yeah. And Jim says, Gary T, remember, the armor models are defaults. Cover it with mud. <laughs> well, that's the thing, because we can actually talk about where you want to put the mud and things like that as well. Based on how it the vehicle worked. I mean, if you if you wanted to, Gary, you could always come on a live like this with me, and, uh, like me and Steph are doing, and just not have a camera on, so you can talk as you're doing it. It's entirely up to you. So we we've I've barely dipped below ten viewers for the whole hour. I know it's great. Yeah. Loving it. Thank you very much, folks. Remember, give us the thumbs up and the likes. Yeah. And if you like his channel, like my channel. If you like my channel, yeah. like his channel. <laughs> Bit of like on both. Yeah. Give us some love. <laughs> Would the flaps have been resting when it was at rest? Would the ailerons just be resting down? They wouldn't, would they? Because they balance each other out. No, it all depends what they're doing in the cockpit. So you'll probably find that sometimes they were actually uh, in different positions. I yeah. never, ever, when I build a aircraft, have yeah. the ailerons, rudder, or elevators in a neutral position. The rudder you can have left or right doesn't matter. Yeah. Just depends on your which way you lean. Mm -hmm. um, the elevators at the back, uh, mm -hmm. I would always have them dropped. Yeah. Uh, because when a pilot gets out, he usually pushes a stick forward out of the way. Yeah. And jumps in. Um, if you're having the aircraft and, and then the ailerons. Um, if you have it, joystick put push forward to the left. Which mm -hmm. way does Spitfire? So for a Spitfire, the pilot gets out the left, so push it forward and right. 
Yeah. So you'd have the uh, right aileron up and the left aileron down. Pushes it. Yep. So he's turning right. So if the it's in the front right position, you'd have the right hand aileron up because as the wind hits, it pushes the wing down, which bumps, does that. And then the opposite one would be the opposite way. So it just depends how they get out. The If you think about, OK, how would the pilot get out of this aircraft? Yeah. When he gets out, and which way, where would he put the stick? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do it as if it's to the right, I think. Not all the way to the right, just slightly to the right. Yeah. Just to create a bit of interest. Mm -hmm. That's all it does. It just stops it being boring. Yeah. So if you look at the, the way it fixes onto this wing, um, if I put it on the big screen, I oh, the cinemas, right? So, would you just run glue along the the length of it, or would you just put it on little spots on the connections? Or, um, what I would do initially mm -hmm. is use super glue. Okay. Uh, use a bit of super glue on the uh, initial spots where, so the connectors where it connects in. And stuff like that so yeah. i do that little, these little lugs in yep so i would use that as my main anchoring point using a bit of super glue mm -hmm. and once that's gone off then i would put some uh plastic glue in there just to give it a bit more of a bond yeah because at least if you pop the super glue in and do it that way you can handle it and you can do things to it and stuff like that uh -huh. Very true. What I've started doing with super glue is I nick some well, permanent reallocation of stores, shall I say, of these little pots. And I just turn it upside down and put the super glue on the bottom of them so they can get to it. You're miles behind me. I've been doing that for years. <laughs> You're nicking, nicking them from uh, McDonald's. To I go fair, into my. Sorry, go on. No, I said, To be fair, I only started modelling just over a year and a half ago. Properly. I hadn't built a model for over 10 years before that. Yeah. But what I do is I go into my local McDonald's uh -huh. and I speak to them and say, look, I make models. This is what I do. Um, would it be possible for me, and I explain just who, who I am, and would it be possible for me to have a couple of these pots so it helps me make some, because this is what I use them for. And every time they're like, yeah, of course. And when I go in now, they see me and they go, hey, uh, do you need some more pots? <laughs> see, I just went, went up and just picked them up as I was getting the rest of my stuff for my drink. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we've got some more comments. Uh, where were we? I think. Uh, no, 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 that one. Uh, uh, Mark Broadwith says, "Can't beat a bit of drop tailor on." Drooped. Oh, he's put dropped. Uh, he's, yeah, it should be drooped, Taylor. On <laughs> bit of droopage. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, <laughs> Jim says, "I think Flying Circus models recently made the Roden Albatross." Ooh. Yes, he did. Yes, I've watched that. Uh, he's one of my favourite YouTubers. Mm. Yeah, I'd love to do a buddy build with him. Have asked, yeah. but didn't get a response. But I know. <laughs> uh, Jim says, Miles Behind. That was my nickname when I was in the cycling team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is really frustrating. 
What's that? This, un this undercarriage, number 15. Yeah. Oh. They say, filled it. Yeah. It's like something like this. A jig would be awesome. Uh, so all I've done is just done the tape the the fuselage together. Yeah. But it, I, what I might do is just put a little double super glue on there, just so I can uh, glue them in place. It's like. Uh, uh. Because it doesn't even show you where on these bits here. There you go. Yes. Pop us on full screen. Pop you on full screen, right here. Yeah. There you go. Right. On the back bit there, they've got yeah. two dimples. Yeah. And they connect. Uh, they've got dimples this side and dimples the other side. Uh -huh. And that connects onto a small piece the other side of the main axle. Yeah. Just there. But it doesn't show you which hole it connects to. <laughs> so it's bloody infuriating. And it doesn't even show you on the other side what it's connecting to. So I'm like, uh, bugger. Okay. I've done my undercarriage. Yeah? Yeah. Mine's slightly different to yours, sir. In what way? So look. It doesn't have that uh, flat, flat axle. It just has a round axle. Does it? Yeah. Ah. Oops. I think that's... Oh, he's got back in there. There you go. So it's that. Oh, focus yeah. thing. There you go. Just that. It just sits free on that. Right, I know what I'm going to do. Do a little bit of drilling. Uh, Duke says, Mikey, you should do the Meng 135 Mark V Mel tank. It's amazing. It has full interior. I have plans to do the interior separate. I'm three quarters through the building of the interior. Mate, if I could afford the Meng 135 uh, Mark V, I would definitely get it because it's one of those kits that I've seen. And it's like, oh, that's gorgeous. I want one. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen one of my mates make it and the detail in it is just stunning. So you've got the uh, shells and everything in there. Yeah, men do some lovely kits. Mm. Captain Chaos, welcome. So, yeah, hello, Captain Chaos. Yeah. Could, if the pilot has done flight checks, the control services could be any which way, but likely left in neutral, maybe. Yeah, quite possibly. What I'm doing for mine is. I'm just having it resting on the ground without a pilot. Yeah, it, as I said, it all depends which way it gets out, especially yeah. sort of pre jet age. Yeah. When the, the jets were all, they became hydraulically controlled. Mm. And there weren't so many linkages. So, yeah, it just really depends. I think it's one of the things I like about doing buddy builds like this is you can discuss ideas with each other as you're going along as well. Yes, yeah, very much. I mean, I doubt you've learned anything from me, but I've certainly learned a lot from you doing it. Uh, 
at s stages I will probably, especially if we come to doing the, the decking and stuff like that and the groundwork, yeah, I will probably learn quite a lot from you because I'm not very au fait with diorama bases. Yeah. Well, have I shown you the base I'm doing for my using for my? No. I shall show you now. Diorama specially. Get it. I'm using that. Oh, the log, very nice. Yeah, I'm going to put it on top of there with some grass and that on it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Martin says, You'll never stop learning. That's nope, very true. Rarely has there been a truer statement. Yeah. Thing is, that once you start to think you know everything, yeah, no, that's when you become arrogant. Yeah. And it's no, it's not a pretty look. That's one thing I'm not, is arrogant. I try very hard not to be. <laughs> you try not to be. <laughs> yeah. Thing is, though, if somebody pisses me off, then I become arrogant. Yeah. If somebody tries to sort of be rude to me or is rude to me, I just become really arrogant with them. Yeah. And they get the arse with me. And I'm like, hey, if you don't like it, don't do it. <laughs> See, I don't really rap because... I've long since given up giving a shit about what people say to me. The thing is, though, this I'm, I'm, I'm to be honest with you, I'm, I'm talking about model making. Yeah. And especially if it's at a model show and somebody's picking on work on the table. Yeah. I'm like, who the hell do you think you are? Yeah. You don't come along and pick holes in my guy's work. You don't do that. Sorry. I get really very protective of them. Yeah. I, I get protective of anybody's work because it's just not fair. Yeah. Gary says, I've got the Edward 148 Docker D Fokker D7 the other day. It looks like a lovely kit, but the P scares me of even attempting it now. Oh. What a coincidence, Gary. Guess what I've got? <laughs> I've also got the Edward 148 Fokker D7. Yeah, I've also got the Fokker D7 from Edward. So, sounds like we're going to have a lot of builds in common, Gary. Actually, think about it, Gary. Since we're going to have quite a few builds in common, are, are you on Discord? If you are, let me know on Facebook and I will send you a link to my Discord channel so we can chat about builds and stuff. DJ Sonic says, Oi, oi, you fuckers. <laughs> oi, oi, Stu. How are you doing, mate? Afternoon. Oh, it is just about ten past. Yep. I've got my ailerons on. Hey. Looking all right. Nice. Yeah. And Gary T says, "Awesome." Yeah, you're on my Discord, aren't you, Steph? I am that. 
Excellent. Jim Altergott says, Fokker D7 has almost no rigging. Would be a good kit to gain experience building World War One airplanes. Ooh, I didn't realise that. Yeah, that would be. Definitely. Hmm. That might be my next aircraft build then. Because I've got the B-17 to do as a, a group build for uh, the Discord group, which is coming up. Um, the Friends of Miles of Heroes Discord group, that is. What I found is, as I've got more confident, I've started doing more builds at the same time. Yeah. Instead of doing one at a time. Yeah. The thing is, though, with that, well, you've got to learn to finish those builds. Well, yeah. Which is something I am absolutely crap at. <laughs> but what was the last one I finished? Um, well, the dioramas. I finished all my dioramas. Yeah. I'm working on the V2 one at the minute as well, aren't I? Which is going to be yeah. cool when it's finished. Uh, John Marley says, absolutely, Jim. I was typing the same thing just now. Oh, about the rigging thing, I think. Uh, DJ Sonic. Yeah. No bad, Mikey, buddy. No painted they models yet. They're looking a bit plain. Ha <laughs> Who invited him? <laughs> Bloody dad jokes. That's our job. Stop it. <laughs> Oh, mate, you should see its hair. It's awesome. It's a proper mohawk. Oh, nice. Yeah. And he has it dyed blue. Cool. <laughs> uh, Jim Altgott, Fokker D7 and D8 are perhaps my two favourite World War One planes of all. Ooh, maybe I should do that as a live build then. Why what do not? you think, Jim? Hmm. Do the uh, Whippet and the Fokker. Whip it real good. Do, 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 do. Whip the little, little fucker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can't do these bloody, this undercarriage at the moment because I can't get the pig and angles right. You're having problems with your undercarriage, are you, Steph? Yep. Because <laughs> it's at an angle like that. That's exaggerated, that is. Yeah. yeah. It, it's just, there's no physical connection between it's yeah. just blue two. Yeah. And it's like it's ah. uh John Marley says Fokker D seven was the only aircraft specifically mentioned in the Treaty of Versailles. Yeah. I wonder if I could get find a copy of the Treaty of Versailles. I wouldn't mind reading that. Hmm. Maybe having a poster. You know, having a frame, put it in a frame on the wall or something. That'd be quite cool. Have you got a big enough frame? Uh, frame. You've got a big <laughs> enough wall. <laughs> Jim says, I think that's a great idea, Mike. Would tune in for that. Awesome. Thank you, Jim. And yeah, I'll give it a go. If anyone has a Fokker, Edward Fokker D7, then they're more than well join me. Or could even do it as you know two people doing completely different builds if you want to do that it's not a problem yeah this time you can hyper detail yeah <laughs> or try to uh sonic says mohawk is bright orange it's meant to be red so blame tiff i actually like it though it makes a nice change having a different color <laughs> so you've got a bright orange mohawk that's awesome. It looked like the Tango Man's gone to rocket. <laughs> oh, my mother's just turned up. <laughs> uh, Jim says, John Marley, yes, that's right. Read that in my World War One kit instructions. Gary T says, Fokker Live build. Yes, please. All right. It's a deal. We'll do a Fokker Live build. As well as the whip it one. Whip it real uh, cool. Yeah. 
DJ Sonic, it was bright pink because my daughter wanted it that way. Wow. That'd be quite cool because he's only like five foot two as well. Five foot two foot five foot four. So having a bright pink mohawk as well. That'd be awesome. John Marley. Ooh, I read it on Wikipedia, I think. Yeah, I never trust Wikipedia, John. You should know better than that. DJ Sonic says, it's now Iron Brew Orange. <laughs> nice. Well, I should hope so. He's Scottish. Yeah. So does that mean it's easy to find you in the shops? <laughs> Just look for the traffic cone walking around. My mother's just turned up and I can hear her talking to my wife in the other room now. <laughs> Hello, Mom. <laughs> She's in the other room. Uh, DJ Sonic says, five foot six, you cheeky bugger. Well, you know, compared to me, mate, that might as well be five foot two. <laughs> All five foot eleven of me. <laughs> I'll go and tell my mum you said hi. And there we go. Yay! I got it, Mikey. Hey. Uh, my mum and my wife are now watching in the living room. <laughs> and now what? They're now watching the live in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> so, Hello, Mum. Hi, hi Mum and hi, Kaylee. Hello, Mum. Hello, Kaylee. <laughs> So there we go. There's that done. Excellent. Mm. Yep, that's square. It'll that be one. able to stand on its own two legs now. Uh, no, because it's not glued together or anything. Ah. Um, it's not glued to the aircraft. Of what I've done is I've drilled out the holes. Yeah. And what I'll probably do is put uh, a little bit of metal. Uh, Jesus Christ. A little bit of wire through it. So snip the nubs off there and then drill little holes in and put some wire in. Yeah. Just to give it that added bit of strength because that is a very weak undercarriage. Yes. Totally so, agree with that. Yeah, I just gotta leave that to dry. And then I can start fanning around with it. But I'm just gonna pop and uh grab a cup of tea. Do you want to yep. do the comments when I come back? Uh, yeah, you can do it when you come back if you want. Sure, yeah. Because I do like getting involved. Yeah, that's... Which is what it's all about. Speaking of cups of tea, coffee, now that I know you're watching, dear wife of mine, my cup is a little bit empty. So if you fancy making me a coffee, that would be much appreciated. Although I think you're talking to some woman giggling because I can hear you. So we got the ailerons on, so it's going to be banking right. 
So stick me over to the right. I can't remember that. <laughs> the wings are actually quite long because that's top wing, and then that's it's going to be huge. I need to zoom out. Still going. There you go. So there's the wings for it. So it is actually going to be properly decent size. Like, so, how long is that? 29 centimeters width of the wing. So it's going to be a nice size when it's finished. I might clean that wing up now. Ooh, it's got a little nick there. Smooth that down. Where's me nice gone? Where's me nice? There it is. Oop, I can hear stuff coming back. Shh. Quick, everyone stop talking. Actually, that could be Steph's gate. Uh, no, his gate is shed door. In fact, it could well be because it's rattling his desk. Kaylee, if you can hear me, shout hello. She's not shouting. Kaylee, can you hear me, darling? Oh, there you go. She shouted hello. Hey. hello. <laughs> My coffee cup's empty, dear. <laughs> so you can hear us then. Excellent. That's Steph. That's got to be Steph coming back. It is very spooky when his shed doors rattling because you can hear him. You can hear it banging, and you can see his camera moving, but you can see that there's no Steph. Uh, I will get to the comments in a bit when Steph comes back because, like I said, he likes to join in and interact with you so we're gonna have quite a few comments to go through Ooh, what are we doing there you go really appreciate you all joining in today as well i'm really grateful for all the support especially me because i only started my channel up uh october it's great to have so many people joining our lives I'm listening to me wrap it on with Steph. And hopefully one day I'll finish building an albatross. Albatross? Get your feet albatross. Your, your ghost was back again, Steph. What ghost? You left your shed door open so we could hear it rattling and we could hear it moving and we could see your desk moving in the wind, but we couldn't see you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he never comes, yeah, he never comes and sees me. <laughs> right. You'd think it'd make him easier to find, but no, still can't see him over the shelves. <laughs> uh, DJ Sonic, not my fault. Tiff keeps hiding all the yellow pages, so got nothing to stand on. <laughs> <laughs> Gary T says, get the ladies modeling too. <laughs> um, oh, my missus does. Yeah, my wife does as well. <laughs> uh, <for> yeah. <laughs> we always get involved. 
Um, Give me a sec, and I'll. Sorry, once we'll we'll go through the comments. Once we've done that, I'll show Gary what my missus does. Yeah. Uh, Jim says, "Now that's good telly." Hello to both the wife and mum of Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Gillian. I know you can hear me. <laughs> She's laughing now. <laughs> uh, Duke Bowser says, Meng's Fokker DR1 in 130 second and 124th are pretty good. They were going to be wing up wings next release and Meng got the bits and pieces for it. Unfortunately, the top wing might be warped. I've got both and I've built both and they are bloody <laughs> awesome. Kaylee's just come in and said, your mum said if, she, if you call her Jillian again, she's going to bat you. Hello, Gillian. <laughs> yeah, Mikey, I've built both. Yeah. Yeah, they're great. Absolutely great. Oops. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? I get thrown with getting a batter in if I call her Gillian. You call her Gillian, she says, hello, darling. <laughs> yeah, but she's probably closer to my age. Uh, I, I wouldn't say, mate. <laughs> Well, I'm 56. Oh, she's older than that. She's older as fuck, mate. Yeah, but the thing is, though, <laughs> I'm happily married. You're, you're closer to my dad's age. Uh, Sonic says, giggity. <laughs> Tiff says, for fuck's sake, Steph, all the innuendos. <laughs> oh, God, yes. What you should do, if you're watching this, you want to play innuendo bingo. DJ Top Sonic says, How do you bang about with a weak undercarriage? Answers on postcard. <laughs> Very uh, carefully, mate. <laughs> John Marley, I'm drinking a Cooper's Stout out of a long neck bottle. My beer glasses are, now, are in a box somewhere. <laughs> if that isn't innuendo, I don't know what is. <laughs> Uh, Jim says, question, where in the UK are you located, Mike? Well, without being too specific, I'm in Wales. <laughs> and, he got uh, it right. Bad. He got it right. Well done, Jim. Mm. He asked, where in the UK? Yes. Because a lot of, no offence, but a lot of Americans would have said, where in England are you? And you'd have gone, yeah. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> That's like the biggest well, insult ever to yeah. the Welsh, isn't it? <laughs> How to offend half the country. Yeah. John Marley says, so I'll not have a tea, Mrs. K. Oh, I'm sure she'd love to make you a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, John, if you're... Uh... She's at work, Mrs. K is. <laughs> uh, DJ Sonic says, what's, what's he doing under his desk? Because on the camera, when you're out, your desk kept moving. Ah, right, what... That's not the desk not moving. It's the camera vibrating from my compressor. Yeah. My compressor kicks in and it vibrates the camera a little bit. Yeah. So that's what that is. Uh -huh. But it, it's not me under the desk. It's somebody. I'm, no, okay, we'll not go there. <laughs> uh, Sonic says, with all those innuendos, it should be called Carry On Crafting. That's a great name for a YouTube video live. <laughs> that would actually work I think yeah uh, Jim says I like watching live builds it motivates me to get to my workbench and build along with you guys well you're more than welcome yep. if you want to join in on a live join in Jim John Marley says hello Gillian love heart <laughs> Oh, I should love you, John. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> so, yes, you're going to show Gary what your wife does in model, scale model. Oh, terms. yes, I am. One second.
whilst you're finding them. Tiffany says, hello, Mama Veteran. And hello, Mrs. Veteran. <laughs> oh my God, they're cackling like witches. My wife's got the filthiest laugh ever. And I can hear it. Right, here we go. Um, I might switch. I'm just hoping to shut the door and you can see it better. Here, a tad bit of room. Right, so this is what she does. Oh, Can nice. I pop this on full screen? Yeah, man, definitely. There you go. So that is what she does, and that's with the light on. They've got electric in them that works. So yeah, yeah. she just done this one. This is what she did for my aunt. Uh -huh. So all the doors in there open yeah. down the back there. So all those doors open and everything. So door works. That's the sort of thing she does. She loves doing those, and they look how much, awesome. How much do them kits cost? Uh, they range anywhere between twenty quid and fifty quid. It depends so. on where you get them from. But no, they're not bad at all prices. Mm. And the other set she does is with the switch. Book looks nice. See, I'd love to have one of them on my bookshelf, but I've got too many books. <laughs> I've actually had to buy. I'm actually, I actually need to get another bookshelf because my two yeah. book, two bookshelves are full. Oh, there you go. There's a little sensor there. You tap, and it lights right. up. I like the water effect in it as well in the bottom. That's just rippled plastic. Ah. Oh, that is. That's just rippled plastic. Yeah, so that's the sort of thing she does. She look, so I, I got her involved in doing them. Hmm. Um, she does a lot. Of, she did a lot of cross stitch. Well, she still does. She does cross stitch. That's her thing. Oh, yeah. the stuff she does is stunning. And... Uh, I bought her a little box, uh -huh. what they call a, a theatre box. Yeah. And everything comes that you need inside the box. Uh -huh. So you open it up and build it all inside the box, and it lights up and all sorts. So that's how I got her involved in it. And her stash is bloody bigger than mine. <laughs> that's saying something. Yep. Cool. So, yeah, that's what... Uh, the missus does excellent uh, well we've got a few um uh, comments yep and i will explain something in a sec once you've gone through the comments so uh, uh yeah tiff said hello to my mum and Kay. and dj sonic said uh tiff's got a filthy laugh as well oh mate Kay was just laughing and it was like a witch's cackle it is proper filthy <laughs> Uh, Gary said, wow, that's so cool to um, Lisa's work. Yep, thank you. Uh, Jim said, seeing that scenery makes me crave some pastries to go with my coffee. <laughs> oh, uh -oh. yeah. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. The wife's here. Uh oh. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm getting struck. Help. A bus. A bus. <laughs> you carry on, Mr. Taking the piss out of my laughing. <laughs> you Spousal like abuse. You pack a witch. <laughs> Spousal abuse. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> Make it your bloody self. Oh, uh, if we're not careful, this is going to go viral. 
Scale modeler gets abused by wife. <laughs> um, Jim says, oh yeah, I've read that out. Uh, Mr. Child says, they're both laughing in there now. <laughs> um, Malcolm Charles, the chairman of M4H and the Grand Fromage, says, hi both, down to six emails in my inbox. I deserve a break to watch you boys for five minutes. Albatross! <laughs> Good fresh albatross. <laughs> Good afternoon, afternoon, boss. And Sonic says, any of you guys ever do model railways? Sonic, you know my answer to that, dude. You know I love building trains. I just don't have enough space for a train set. Oh, no, we're not that sad. He says, as he pulls out, a Deltic. Oh no, we, we don't do train mod. No, get that thing off. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> oh, back to innuendo bingo. <laughs> Gary says, You know, these streams bring me such joy. Thank you both so much. I love it. Oh, mate, you're welcome. You're very welcome. And, you know, if you ever feel like you want to join in, you're you're more than welcome to join in on one of my lives. Now, you don't have to go on camera. You could do like this, or you could just talk on the microphone. You're more than welcome, buddy. You can join in the Discord group. We've got Friends of Models for Heroes. Yeah. You, know, you, could, you could join that for £12 a year, and you could come on Discord with us and build with us. And we're on there pretty much every day now. And we're starting doing things like pub nights and things. And then all the money that's left over at the end of the year from the subs goes to Models for Heroes to help veterans and first responders with uh, scale modeling kits and things. Uh, Sonic says, yay, a fellow Anorak. Mikey! Yes. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to... Um, the Dungeon Master for Smalls for Heroes yesterday. Oh, well, Simon. Yes. And we've realized, we've come to the conclusion that I am actually a complete nerd. Because I like scale modeling. I like trains. I like Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> and I do a lot of reading and history stuff. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm close behind you. I just don't do the trains. The trains have never appealed to me. Mike, I, I, I'm really interested in conspiracy theories and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I tend to try and debunk them. Yeah. I'll research them and go, yeah, no, that's just complete and utter crap. Yeah. Um. The thing I'm doing a lot of research in at the moment, I'm actually watching uh, a program that's on the History Channel. Uh -huh. it, it's about Hitler and could he escape? Could he have escaped at the end of the Second World War? Oh, because yeah, when they look at the, the Argentinian. Body, yeah, the body that the Russians have uh -huh. is not Hitler. Uh -huh. One, it's the wrong blood group. Two, it's the wrong sex. Hmm. So the Russians have claimed that they have him. They had him at the end of the war, which they didn't. Uh -huh. um, yes, he could have escaped quite easily. Uh -huh. um, but it's more than likely he actually he did, he did die in his bunker yeah. but, and they burnt him. But what they did, they put a couple of spare bodies in the burn pit. And they moved him and Eva to a different burial site. Yeah. That is more than likely what happens. But yeah. could he have escaped Berlin at that time? Oh, hell yes. Oh, yeah. He could have. But because of his health and how he was, because he had early onset Parkinson's. Yeah. Um, and he... Uh, he was not. He, he really f had trouble getting in and out of the bunker as well. So yeah. to get him all the way across Lon uh, London, across Berlin in that state, 
would have been a hell of a job. Yeah. So I don't think he did escape, but they haven't got his body. No. And another one about that is uh, Martin Bormann. Yeah. The German government said, look, we found him. We found his body here, exactly where they'd searched 40 years previously. <laughs> And didn't find anything. Yes. And then when they did find the body, uh, the mud he was in was analysed. Yeah. And they found that that mud was not native to Europe. Yeah. The mud was actually native to South America, and specifically Argentina. Interesting. Yeah, so he escaped. Yeah. He died in Argentina. And there's documents proving this. Well, they, they found um, German submarines and sunk over there, haven't they? Yep. They scuttled them just off the beaches. Yeah. So, yeah, there are Nazis who escaped. Well, uh, Second World War Germans. Uh, we don't say the N-word. No. Because the last time we did that, we were talking about... A film called uh, uh, is it Run Rabbit Run? Oh, um, yes, that Joe. one. Yeah, yeah, and this was live on Models of Heroes, and we yeah. got booted by YouTube <laughs> because the N word was used on several occasions. Yeah, and we got kicked off, <laughs> and Malcolm's like, "The hell's going on? We've just been booted." <laughs> Mm-hmm. What are you going to say? No. And we, yeah, we found we spoke to uh, YouTube and we were saying, well, we're referencing a film. Yeah. Oh, well, we don't know. It's the algorithms. You can't tell. So we never use the N word and we never use the H word. Yeah. So, but yeah, things like that I find intriguing. Absolutely intriguing. There's a, cha- a YouTube channel you'd love. It's called Tick History. All right. And he's a historian. He's actually a proper historian, but he was um, a proper, like, hardcore left wing socialist. And as he's learned about history, he's actually gone, actually, and gone a minute. <laughs> um, things aren't quite what we were told in terms yeah. of that side of uh, politics. Yeah, socialism and. Yeah. That so, in principle, socialism, socialism is amazing. It's brilliant. But it's the people who get in charge of it that actually knack it for everybody. But he's um, he's done videos, you know, proving it all, going into all the, like, his uh, the, the tabletop hit. What's it called? Is he gone again? Yep, he's gone again. Okay, while he's gone again, let's just go through some... I bet you any money, his wife and his mum have cut the cable. They've cut him off. Right, where are we? Uh... Hang on, back again. Okay, let's quickly... I'll quickly go through the comments. Yay, a fellow one, right, Mikey. Uh, Question, does the term UK have the same meaning as Great Britain used to? No. Uh, No. It's two different things. No, it's not. It is. The United, United States, States. Okay, Great Britain is Great. England, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales, Northern Ireland, and Wales. No. The United Great. Kingdom is England, Scotland, and Wales. No. The United Kingdom is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Okay. No. Great Britain is the landmass, whereas the UK is the political entity. Got you. Oh, there you go. Every day's a school day. Yeah. Right, I'll let you finish off the comments then as you're hosting. Yeah. Uh, Sonic says, Steph keeps his trains in the closet. Laugh out loud. I like conspiracy stuff as well. <laughs> if, you, if you like conspiracy stuff then, uh, go and have a look for Y files. Uh-huh. Because what he does, he, he'll go through one and he builds it up, builds it up, and the way he presents it, you're like, 
oh, this this is so true. And then he goes and debunks it. <laughs> well, I'll rephrase that. He debunks what he can, but yeah. he will sit there and say, right, I've debunked what I can, yeah. but I can't debunk ABC, JKL, and XYZ. But yeah. all the rest, yeah, you can ignore because it's a load of rubbish, but the rest cannot be debunked. So it's very good. It's called Y Files. And it's got hecklefish. Lizard people! Sorry. <laughs> if you know, you know. Before Go and watch uh, it. It's brilliant. Sorry. Before I get, carry on with the comments, because we've really got 50, uh, 15 minutes left. Oh, I've done, done my ailerons. I've sanded down both wings. I thought you were going to finish your comments off. Yeah, I'm just saying before I do that. All right, okay. Just so people know, just so people know that it's not that I'm not doing anything. It's I've done what I need to for today, so I'll concentrate on the comments for the last fifteen minutes. Right, cool. Uh, Jim says, uh, "Budget modeler, I have a friend that believes Mr. H made it out of Berlin to South America. He could have. He could have made it out." I'm not saying he did. I'm just saying it was possible. Mm. Which is uh, a big difference. But I, I don't think he did. It's not It's not entirely unfeasible. No, it's not. Uh, Jim says, Mark Felton did a comprehensive series about both Borman and Himmler. Yeah. Mm. Mr. Felton. Bit of a red in, red under the bed there, <laughs> especially his commentary on the Ukraine. It's very Russia or Russia specific. Uh, I, I, yeah, after a few of his, I, I stopped watching him because I'm like, no, you, you're just being a bit. You've been very biased towards towards the Russians. Yeah. So yeah, it's very good though what he does. Yeah. I think this is the problem with a lot of historians. They they find it very hard to sort of sit in the middle and be objective. Yeah. Because yeah. they let their personal feelings get involved too much. Yeah. And the thing, if you're doing history, you've got to sit on the fence. You can't sit and go, well, this and that and that and that. No. Yeah. You're there to give us an unbiased commentary on history. Yes, exactly. Uh, Mr. Marley says Mark Felton has a series of YouTube videos on Mr. H's body, Borman's possible escape, hours of viewing, and wonderfully researched. Yes, yes, I've seen those. <laughs> John, high five, Jim, again. <laughs> we keep writing the same thing at the same time. Uh, Jim says Tick has an interesting take on history that I follow regularly. He really does. That's so it's that what? Tick. tick history? Yeah, it's spelled T-I-K. Cool. I will go and have a I Guess what I'm doing this afternoon. He's even done um, a video explaining why Mr. Uh, the, it, you know, going through all documents. It's, I think it's like a four-hour video um, proving that Mr. Hague was a socialist. Okay. And it's, when you watch it, when you watch it all, you're like, First time I watched it, I was like, yes, now that makes more sense. Mm. <laughs> um, John Marley says, exactly. Jim says, thank you for that answer, Mike. Helps a foreigner like me learn a little more about current life in your country. Thanks again. Not a problem. So, as said, Great Britain is England, Wales, Scotland, because it's the landmass, the island itself. The, the United Kingdom is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So it's the it's the yes. sovereign entity sort of thing, the crown. And then you've got the Commonwealth. Yeah, then you've got the Commonwealth. Go then. Yeah, you've got the Commonwealth <laughs> and you've got the dependencies and all sorts. Yep. There's some really interesting videos about it on YouTube. Uh Tiff says, woohoo, PC all sorted out now. Looks weird in my dining room. Thankfully, thankfully, I only have a small two-seater table in there that folds down. 
Excellent. Go. Uh, Sonic says, might check that out. I like the ones that prove that governments do attack their own people for their own evil gains. 9-11, Operation... I'm not saying that because it'll get us taken down. 7-7 seven, seven attacks and the Qf pandemic. Yeah. Etc. Yeah, got to be really careful what I say because we're a modelling stream and we don't want to be taken down for being saying something silly. Yep. Uh, John Marley, represent. All right. <laughs> Cool. I'm, I'm going to go on Discord and he's going to be going, Booyah, catch ya. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's getting down with the youngsters, is Mr. Marley. <laughs> so we're at an hour and 51, and we've still got 10 people watching. How mm. awesome is that? Oh, that's brilliant. Absolutely I'm, fantastic. I'm mega impressed today. Well, it's my mighty pull. <laughs> Well, yeah. Oh, your, oh. Win, your winning personality. <laughs> well, as my mum always said, people, I'm I like my mate. You either love me or you loathe me. There's no in between. If the camera's back to front, look. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kay's just come in and said, why is your wedding ring on the wrong hand? I was like, it's not. It's just back to front. It's mirrored. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that should be my left hand. Is that not? Is that my right hand on there? That's your right hand on there. Right. You have so you to need tell to me mirror it. There we go. That's better. See, I, I don't understand why StreamYard does that because everything's back to front now on the cam on my screen. Yeah, just Sweet. check with us before the show starts. Yeah. Uh, Jim says, "Sorry about getting political, guys. I always." There and say there are no politics in modeling. It's not a problem. Uh, we just got to be careful about what we actually say. Yep. I quite, I find it all quite interesting. I do. Um, but it, it's history. There's a time and a place, and modeling is not the place to do it. It's it's about chilling, relaxing, yeah, and not having to worry about those stresses. Yeah. It's about just doing your modelling. It's about cutting shit, talking balls, and stuff like that. And it is, yeah, I think discussing politics and stuff like that is very much a face-to-face -face thing. Yeah. It's, a, it's one of those topics that's very shaky ground, especially on YouTube. Oh, yeah. You've only got to say you, you like the wrong party and you'll get your channels taken down or something daft. Yep. So, yeah. yeah. It's all crazy. Yep. But it'll all settle out, settle down. It's just people are changing. People's yeah. attitudes. But anyway... That's a whole different conversation. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's one for Discord or something. Yes. Freedom of speech redacted. Laugh out loud. Thanks, YouTube. <laughs> yeah. There's no there's no such thing as freedom of speech on YouTube. There's YouTube nope. speech. Yeah. Which is fair enough because they're their own company, they're entitled to make their own rules. Yep. You're effectively if you're doing live streams and stuff, you're effectively becoming a sort of employee of YouTube kind of thing. Yeah. Which is fair enough. Uh, Tiff might be going live tomorrow, Mikey. Just a nice, chill, random live about nothing in particular. Excellent. Well, let us know and uh, we'll watch it. Oh, I will. Whether well, Steph does or not, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm probably going live tomorrow and Sunday. With the Agora build, because Lise is working tomorrow. Yeah. So when she's at home, like tonight, um, yeah. I tend to prefer to spend time with her. No, oh, you can so, tell you nearly wet. <laughs> listen, mate, I've been with her for over 10 years now. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it is. It's, it's always nice. So, yeah. It, it does feel different when you're married, though, doesn't it? 
Uh, complete and utterly. Anybody who tells you marriage doesn't change you is a liar. Yeah. Um, have we got time? Yeah, I've got yeah. five minutes. I can quickly We've got as much time as we want. It's our stream. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I can remember the, well, the day we got married. I remember everything that happened that day. Uh -huh. And there's always been this horrible little voice in my head going, she's not going to marry you. you yeah. You're not good enough for her. And all that crap and all that bollocks that everybody has, but a lot of people don't admit to having, oh, no, I haven't got anything like that. Yeah, of course you have. Everybody has it. Everybody yeah. has that little voice in their head that says you're not good enough and all the rest of it. Yeah. Call it it's imposter syndrome, that's what they call it. Yeah. Call it in the psychology world. And <clears throat> I'm stood there going, she's not going to turn up. She's not going to turn up. She's not going to turn up. And she walked around the corner and she turned up. And at that moment, that horrible little voice in my head just went, poof, disappeared. <laughs> it's gone. And it completely changed me because she's made that commitment to me. I now know that I don't have to worry about things like that. We can have a blazing row. Yeah. And we make up before we go to bed. Um, and it doesn't change the fact that we are both in love with each other and yeah. we both care for each other greatly and we don't get turned around and go, well, I, I don't want to be here anymore just because you've had an argument. Yeah. It shouldn't be like that. Yeah. See, Kay, Kay's all right, I suppose, but... No, I'm joking. I was actually thinking about this this morning when I sat in the car. And I was actually thinking, Kay is sort of like my left arm. I could probably yeah. survive without it, but I really can't imagine doing that. And I would never want to. <laughs> yeah. I feel the same way about this. Yeah, I don't know what I'd do without her. Yeah. Because... Um, She's been there for me. She's supported me through everything I've been through. Yeah. And she's going through the lady thing. She's going through the menopause at the moment. And she's having a real bad time. And I'm just there to support her. I'm there to do what she did for me. Yeah. Not because I feel I have to. It's because she was there for me. Yeah. So I'm going to be there for her. Because I want to be there for her. Yeah. Yeah. You, you take the crap with a smooth. Yeah. And this thing, I mean, it's, it's really weird because, like, if they have to go into hospital or something like that in an emergency, all of a sudden, everything other than that path, that person switches off in your head. So yeah. You literally stay up for days sat next to the bed and things like that, which I, I have actually done with Kate. Mm. Um, you know, I've, I've fallen asleep with my head on the just on the edge of her hospital bed and things like that, and I didn't eat because all I was concerned about was watching her monitors and making sure they were okay and make sure the nurses were alerted if anything happened. Yeah, yeah, it's very strange. It does have a different different impact on you. Yes, it does. A good one though. Oh. Very much, very much. Right, are we going to crank up these uh, comments and scoop? Because I have to go and do some shopping for tea because I'm chief cook and bottle washer. Jim said, believe me, there's too much mixing of politics and modelling here in the US. That doesn't surprise me with yeah. the US, to be honest. <laughs> Everything's political in the US. Yeah. Uh, John says... Chilling, relaxing as we build miniature vehicles and aircraft ordered by governments to kill other people. Blissful, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> That's one way of looking at it, John. Uh, Sonic says, modelling Tiff. <laughs> Warhammer, I mean. Behave, boys. <laughs> Tiff says, nah, just a chilling chat. I might do model ones if I can get it set up properly. Yeah, give it a go. You'll enjoy it. And it helps you to relax. It takes your mind off the fact that you're on a live stream as well. Yeah. Uh, Gary says, my wife is my soulmate and my best friend. Yeah, absolutely, mate. 
I think all of us feel that, feel that don't we? Yeah. Not that we ever admitted to them, which we probably should from time to time. Yes. Yeah. I know I don't say it enough to Kay. Mm. But anyway. There you go. Mr. Marley's just put, ooh, ooh, everyone, it's always a pleasure. That's what yeah. she said. <laughs> oh, you're going straight to hell for that one. <laughs> right. So, we're at the two hour mark now. So, uh, you know, show what you've done, stuff. Yep. I'll put you on the big screen. Yep. So in two hours, I have built two wheels, sanded them down. Yep. I've built an undercarriage. Ooh. And play with the undercarriage. Yep. It's very weak. <laughs> it's a bit leaky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is that needs another gluing, another setup and another gluing. And Good. I've uh, put the rudder pedals in. Oh, nice. I wonder and what that was for. <laughs> cleaned up all the edges of the lower wing. So, yeah, that's what I've done. What have you done, Mikey? What have I done? Not very much. Um, oh, crap. There you go. Nearly glued both wings together. <laughs> That would have been fun trying to get that part. I've sanded down the, the lower wing. It's all nice and smooth around the edges. And I've glued the ailerons onto this one and sanded all this one down. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to go too much further. So, but yeah, I'm happy with that. Good. That, that brings me on to section 18 then. So it's where I actually start getting to the main build part. Yeah. So that, that'll be what I'm doing next week, which will be better because I can concentrate on that whilst you're running the stream then. Yep. So, awesome. And that's my mouse. So, with that all being said and done, would you like to say your tatty bye, Steph? Give me one second. Thank you, bye, folks. Stay safe, keep modelling, and have fun. And thank you for joining. And thank you from me. And we'll see you all again, hopefully, next week. See you uh, next Friday. Yeah. Well, let's go to the outro. Wrong ass. <laughs> I had to do it, didn't I? <laughs> Hang on. Our outro is not there. It's not. Where's that gone? I put that up this morning because I put them both up. Okay, I need to look at this. Right, not a problem. Just uh, We'll just have to say goodbye then. <laughs> no. right. See you later, guys. See ya. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>